native people, native culture, native knowledge. Hi, I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you award-winning Heartbeat Alaska. Bringing you national and international native news, this is award-winning Heartbeat Alaska, the premier native voice in native programming. There's a heartbeat loud as thunder revolution is in the air There's a heartbeat deep inside our mother Are you too cool to care? Now, with Heartbeat Alaska, here's Jeannie Green. The show Heartbeat Alaska. The producer, Jeannie Green. Hi, this is Jeannie Green. On today's program, we take a look at our favorite stories from the year 2000. And we present a brand new music video from Florida's own Tiger Tiger from the Seminole Tribe in Florida. All coming up on today's program. I hope someday I'll make some money It never will compare to you They could take it all away I'd still be happy If you were there to see me through Cause I know a cliche It's true every day we're alive You can't find a love You know you've got the have to survive Heartbeat Alaska thanks Wave Wholesale Company your one-stop supply source for village retail stores, food service customers, and government agencies. Welcome aboard, Wave. Support for this program provided by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We've been giving Alaskans the support they need since before Alaska was even a state. And we'll be here when you need us. We're here. We're with you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. By the Nature Conservancy of Alaska working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. There'd be a flagpole raising in their village, an elders conference, a basketball tournament. If it's important to the village, it's important to me. And I put it on and that to me is news. The homeland of the First Nations people of this area is located in a land of great natural beauty and biological richness. Halfway between Haynes Junction and Whitehorse is Champaign Village. A hundred years ago, the First Nations people here pursued a subsistence hunting and fishing lifestyle. Caribou, moose, doll sheep, Mountain goat, gophers, and small mammals were hunted and trapped for food and clothing. Resident fish species in the lakes and rivers were also an important food source and were taken throughout the year. Villages were normally situated on lakes. The discovery of Klondike gold in 1898 initiated the first great influx of non-natives into the region, changing life forever. Hi, my name is Mita Williams. I am actually Southern Toshone and Northern Toshone. I'm a member of the Wolf Clan people. And the camp that I'm going to walk you into is a recreation of a long ago people's place, which is pronounced Kudei Dun Kai. So, welcome. Try to imagine actually living in a structure made out of moose skins and actually staying from late fall, October, right until springtime. Gathering moss as a chinking material and cutting babiche for tying strings to hold the skins on a spruce and alder willow frame. Okay, I invite you to walk in. Just watch your step as it 
as the trail slopes down and to find a seat on the caribou highs on the inside. So with five children and five grown adults, they would all be nestled in here for a very long and cold winter. The clothing that you would be wearing is actually made out of caribou hides like this, with the hair against the skin, and the flesh side was scraped and softened. The small children wore two layers of caribou skin. The first layer was the hair against the skin, and then flesh to flesh with the second, and the hair on the outside. Okay, and then you'd have like your, a hot, hot fire in a pit in the center of your dwelling. And you would gather a lot of dried wood, um, not using green wood. If you use green wood, it'd become very smoky in here. All you need to finish up this structure is to actually put moose skin over the doorway and then to put another smaller hide up above so that all the snow and the coldness wouldn't all creep in. The spruce branches that you lay on the ground acts as a barrier to keep the coolness off of your back area and your kidney area. So it's always good to, to have spruce on the ground. And we change this periodically. Um, during, during a five month period, we probably change it about four times as it gets dry. Okay. We're not out there pounding heads. We're not out there saying, you hurt us and we are hurt and therefore we are in this situation. No, what I'm saying is we have endured and we can help you endure. Pedro Bay is an Athabascan Indian village located at the north end of Lake Iliamna, just above the Alaskan Peninsula. But its history starts 16 miles across the lake on the Iliamna River. Yeah, that's the old village. Must have been 150 people there. Old Iliamna, or the old village as it is now called, is nothing but tall grass, an old wooden structure, and some fond Anybody memories. Walk up to her? The freedom I had when I was uh, a small boy. Of course, I didn't have to go to school because there was no school there. And I was able to hunt and fish and do just about anything I wanted any time. And um, I even had a drop line. Close by, you know, about, say, 10, 15 feet apart, I guess, some, some, somewhere a little further. And the house was all up and down like this, you know, with all curved from the top of the hill there. Old Iliamna was an area rich in fish and wildlife. There used to be lynx around on Martin, and fox, and wolverine, and there were wolves around. In the later years, the area was a center of transportation for supplies to and from the Cook Inlet region. Atna country is Chief Harry John's country, and recently, Harry and Ruth John celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary in Copper Center. anniversary. We've got some good music today. People are going to be singing and uh, I just want to welcome you. Ah, I'll try the car. <laughs> <laughs>
family members and friends filled Kludika Hall in Copper Center. The Johns have raised 10 children and have over 100 grandchildren and great-grandchildren, plus one great-great-great-grandchild. And I guess what really stands out in my mind, and I, I really want to thank, I don't know how many people are here from the Copper Center Church, Glen Allen and Golcana Church, but I'll tell you what, my mom and dad has a fa uh, uh, they have, their life is centered around prayer. And uh, that's how I wake up in the morning, they're praying. Um, as a child, I remember waking up and dad praying. And I remember them, they always, always seem to have devotion in the morning sometime together and they pray. Uh, but they pray and if they have anything wrong, goes wrong or right, they'll pick up the phone and say, let's call somebody. They call somebody and say, let's pray about it. So that's, you know, that stuck to me, you know, and, and I just really appreciate that. And I think that's I really want to thank everybody for coming years. today. You know, when you get this old and uh, sometimes you think, well, I'm too old for everybody, you know, even the young children. But I see it different sometimes. I see the young people really come to me and like me, and my wife too. So there is someone that loves you. And I think of the time that we spend together. There's times, 60 years is a long time. There's times sometimes that uh, we never agreed with one another. And for uh, two, three hours, we feel like, uh, you know, but she's saying, I don't agree with this. What I say, and she doesn't agree with it. So we get back together and said, well, there's something wrong with that. And we, a lot of times, you know, things come up that uh, we don't agree with too. But uh, we spend 60 years with one another and it was, it's been good 60 years. We go out on the highways, drive to Anchorage and things like that. But she said, she didn't like my driving. I don't know why, but <laughs> every time, <laughs> seems like every time we leave here, she'd go to sleep, you know, wake up in Anchorage. <laughs> I was glad of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank my children, each one of them today, for helping in this time together. And I know my children, my grandchildren, all love us. They never stay away from our place. They come and help themselves to get something to eat, too, the, our grandchildren. I have a lot of friends that came in today. I want to thank all the people who are here today, all our friends and relatives, all come over to celebrate our, you know, we didn't know that many years went by, you know, I told somebody that it, it doesn't seem that long. Just when you're happy in the, with somebody you staying with, you you feel like you, everything's okay. And I want to thank for all my children who who love the Lord and. They testify and things, right? I want to thank the Lord for them. Many things, my relatives who are saying something here for us, uh, I want to thank you for all been here. Chin Ann. But Greg was the most active among, among them. He worked extra hard. Beatrice Brown shouldn't be here, but she is. She's a walking miracle. And during this holiday season, everyone enjoys a story with a happy ending. And this story has one. But it began with a tragedy. 
she had she had a real close call about um, oh, about 25 years ago, I think. Maybe, no, maybe less than that, about 15 years ago, where she got caught underneath the same boat, my dad's same boat, in fact. Um, one of my nephews had fallen in off the boat while it was running. My mom didn't want to see him, see us lose him, so she ran and jumped in overboard for him. And uh, when they came back around to pick him up, um, she got caught underneath the prop and got sucked underneath the boat, and uh, we, we almost lost her that year. Um, she has a real good story on that one, too. Um, she lost her arm and uh, part of her scalp, and uh, she really got chopped up underneath there, but um, she, she lived through it. Um, she got her arm reattached, too, so uh, that was the first time ever, uh, from what I understand. And, and Seattle doctors told me, Mrs. Brown, you are never going to go back to work. You're not going to work. You have to learn how to live your life over again. You have to learn a lot of things. We don't know how far you're going to go. But you're not going to work again. You're not going to do anything because you're going to be crippled. I had to learn how to walk. I had to learn how to dress. I had to learn how to eat. I had to learn how to use my hand. I was a right-handed person. I became a left-handed. So I couldn't walk. I couldn't, I couldn't dress. I couldn't put my own clothes on. I couldn't do anything. So just like a brand new baby, I had to do all these things again. I had to learn how and when I was home for one year, they told me, well, I was going back down to Seattle for uh, checkups, after checkups. And this one night when I came here to Juno to the hotel, there was somebody that came to my door and told me that he said, Beatrice, your life was put, you were put back on this earth for a purpose. The life you're going to lead now is going to be different. Other people, caring for them, helping them, loving them. That's what Beatrice Brown and her son Greg Brown are all about. Greg works for Hope Community Resources in Juneau. In his spare time, he teaches the youth traditional dances, keeping the culture alive while guiding and caring for the youth. The kids are great. Um, I told them the only requirement I had for any of the children to learn was that uh, they had to be committed and they had to be um, discipline to discipline themselves to make it to practices and sing and dance and, and I'll do the rest. And they've been that, they've done that. Um, just by the amount of awards that we won in one year uh, shows us that these kids are really serious. You know, I'm really proud of them, I really am. Um, even with a, such, such a big group as that, uh, we've come a long ways. We've done a lot of things. Uh, we learned a lot of things. And it's still helping them out quite a bit. The stories of Beatrice Brown and her son Greg are inspiring, hopeful stories. And during this holiday season, we hope we've brightened up your day with this happy Thanksgiving story. For Greg and Beatrice Brown have much to be thankful for, and we're thankful for them. Happy Thanksgiving from Heartbeat, Alaska.
earlier we heard um, the federal agencies, in particular Department of Defense, EPA, and Interior, talking about um, their government-to-government -government policies and, and their desire to consult with Alaska's tribes. going to take our place? Who? That's what my grandfather says. Who's going to take our place? Who's, who's going to lead us? There was always opposition to this. This shows you the voice and the action of the people. No one knew what, what happened to this new Congress. It's going to have a lot of ramifications back. It's the right step, Grandpa used to say. That's when we'll get it, if we stick together. And I see it now. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Native News. We're looking forward to the video that we hope you send. For all of us here, have a wonderful week. God bless you. Remember, life is abundant. We read the book. We came to the last chapter, and we win. See you next week. <laughs>